Welcome to The Rock Rocker. Today, we aren't just talking rocks. We are talking the rock. Yes, welcome to Alcatraz, one of America's most famous or infamous prisons built on an ancient geological story that you've probably never heard, so I'm going to tell you all about it. So what would you say if I told you that Alcatraz wasn't always an island or that it sits on the same rock formations that make up San Francisco's famous hills? So stick around as we unlock the geological secrets of Alcatraz Island, a journey that will take us back over 100 million years and across thousands of miles of ocean floor. Before we dive into the fascinating geology of this infamous island, let's take a moment to understand why Alcatraz became known as America's premier maximum security prison. From 1934 until 1963, Alcatraz served as the final stop for the nation's most incorrigible prisoners. A place of contradictions with a grim past that has transformed into one of San Francisco's most prominent landmarks. This prison was the federal government's response to the fears around public safety and organized crime in post-prohibition, post-depression America. Attorney General Homer Cummings and Director of the Bureau of Prisons, Sanford Bates, specifically sought a remote location that would prohibit constant communication with the outside world. Alcatraz Island? isolated in the cold, harsh waters of San Francisco Bay, was the perfect solution. James A. Johnson, a businessman and prison administrator with 12 years of experience in the California Department of Corrections, became Alcatraz's first warden and would serve in this position for 14 years. The prison operated as a concentration model, an experiment where difficult-to-manage prisoners from other institutions would be concentrated under one roof. Interestingly, What made Alcatraz such an ideal prison, its isolation on an island, is all due to its unique geology. And it's ultimately what led to its closure. Supplies had to be brought in by boat, contributing to incredibly high operating costs. By 1963, the federal government decided it was more cost-effective to build a new high-security institution rather than maintain Alcatraz. While notorious criminals like Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Alvin Karpis did time there, most of the 1,576 prisoners weren't famous gangsters. They were inmates who refused to follow the rules at other institutions, were considered violent and dangerous, or were deemed escape risks. Alcatraz was essentially the prison system's prison. Life on Alcatraz was structured around a simple philosophy. Prisoners had only four rights. Food, clothing, shelter, and medical care. Everything else was a privilege that had to be earned. The highly structured, monotonous daily routine was designed to teach inmates to follow rules and regulations. The typical stay on Alcatraz was about eight years. Once officials felt a prisoner no longer posed a threat and could follow rules, he would be transferred back to another federal prison to finish his sentence. Of course, no history of Alcatraz would be complete without mentioning its most famous escape attempt. On June 11, 1962, Frank Lee Morris and brothers John and Clarence Anglin pulled off what many consider the most ingenious prison break in American history. These men spent months designing their escape, creating lifelike dummy heads from soap, toilet paper, and human hair to fool the guards during night checks. They crafted water survival gear from raincoats and dug through their cell vent holes using improvised tools. Whether they survived the escape remains one of America's most enduring mysteries. Officially, they're presumed to have drowned in the bay's frigid waters, but no bodies were ever found. What do you think? Could they have made it? Daily life for prisoners was confined to tiny five-by-nine-foot cells. Most men could extend their arms and touch each wall within their cell. Today, it is a site that is managed by the National Park Service and more than a million visitors come from all over the world to tour the old jailhouse. But unlike the men who arrived here decades ago, these visitors step onto the rock voluntarily. Now let's turn our attention to the incredible geological story of this island. The rock that makes up the rock. A tale that began millions of years before the first prisoner ever set foot on Alcatraz. So before we talk about Alcatraz specifically, we need to understand the story going on beneath our feet in this entire Bay Area. This entire region sits on top of what geologists call the Franciscan Complex, a bizarre jumble of rocks that were assembled during the ancient collision of tectonic plate. Rocks now form five major terrains, or rock units, that cut across San Francisco like a giant geological layer cake. And one of these terrains, the Alcatraz Terrain, forms this specific island. 
These are the rocks underneath the rock. How many rock references and puns can I make before you swipe away? So here we can get a closer look at the rocks that make up Alcatraz Island. This is called the Alcatraz Terrain, and it's made up of primarily thickly bedded sandstone. So if you look at this rock up close, you'll notice that it's a little bit rough and feels kind of like sandpaper. That's because it's made up of ancient sand grains that were compressed over millions of years. Most of these grains are about the size of a pinhead and contain minerals like quartz and feldspar. But there's also little tiny grains of igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, and red chert. These sand grains were originally eroding from the North American continent during the Cretaceous period. This sandstone tells us a fascinating story. During the early Cretaceous period, about 100 to 140 million years ago when dinosaurs still ruled the Earth, mountains along the ancient North American continent were slowly eroding away. Rivers carried these sand grains westward to the ocean, where they were rapidly deposited on the seafloor. As more and more sand accumulated, the lower layers were compressed and cemented together, eventually forming the sandstone we see today. From about 200 to 65 million years ago, a piece of the Earth's crust called the Farallon Plate was colliding with and diving beneath North America in what geologists call a subduction zone. As this happened, some of the rocks from the ocean floor didn't get pushed deep into the Earth. Instead, they got scraped off and plastered onto the edge of the continent. The result is the Franciscan Complex, a geological jigsaw puzzle made up of various rock types that were once scattered across the Pacific Ocean floor. So one of the most interesting aspects of San Francisco's geology is that the rock layers are actually in a reverse order of what you'd expect. Now generally, when we look at stacks of rocks, the older layers are on the bottom and the younger layers are on top. And that makes sense as things get deposited over time. But here in San Francisco, it's actually the opposite. The oldest layer, the Alcatraz terrain, which we're standing on here, is actually at the top of the stack. And the youngest layer, the San Bruno Mound layer, is at the bottom of the stack. This bizarre arrangement happened because of how these rocks entered the Franciscan subduction zone. It's as if you were making a stack of pancakes, but instead of placing each new pancake on top, you slid each new one underneath the stack. That's exactly what happened with these rock layers. Younger rocks were stuffed under older ones as they entered the subduction zone. After a subduction stopped about 65 million years ago, these rock layers were uplifted by tectonic forces and gradually exposed by erosion. Today, we can see the ancient seafloor rocks forming the hills of San Francisco and islands in the bay, including Alcatraz. If we look at the rocks in Alcatraz, we can see that the sandstone beds are extremely thick, about 10 to 20 feet thick and they form steep cliffs on the west side of the island. It's these massive, erosion-resistant beds that make Alcatraz stand out so prominently in the bay. You might notice how these rocks are tilted at a steep angle. When these sandstones were originally deposited on the ocean floor, they would have been horizontal. But that dramatic tilting happened later, when these rocks were carried into that subduction zone. So this famous prison wasn't built on an island by coincidence. It was built on a hill that became an island after sea levels rose during the last ice age. Nature created the perfect prison long before humans ever decided to build here. During the ice ages of the Pleistocene Epoch, when sea levels were much lower due to water being locked up in massive ice sheets, there was no water in San Francisco Bay at all. During these times, Alcatraz would have just been another San Francisco hill similar to Telegraph Hill or Knob Hill. Standing here, we can see the distinctive hills of downtown San Francisco. And now you know the geological secret of them. The rock that Alcatraz is built on is the same rock that makes up San Francisco's famous hills. During these periods of low sea level, the Sacramento River flowed westward through what's now called Raccoon Strait between Angel Island and the Tiburon Peninsula, then out through Golden Gate. There's still a deep channel in the bay that follows this old river channel. As the last ice age ended around 11,700 years ago, sea levels rose, flooding the valley and creating the San Francisco Bay. Hills that were once connected to the mainland became islands, and one of them would eventually become the perfect natural prison. So basically Alcatraz Island is just another San Francisco hill that happens to be surrounded by water. While we've focused on the Alcatraz terrain today, it's worth noting that San Francisco has four other major Franciscan rock units, each with their own amazing geological story. Each of these rock units represents its own chapter in the complex geological history of the San Francisco Bay Area. 
If you're planning to visit Alcatraz, tickets sell out quickly, especially during summer months, so book your ferry tickets well in advance. I personally booked an Alcatraz night tour through Alaska City Cruises and really enjoyed it. For geology enthusiasts, I do recommend visiting early in the day when crowds are thinner. This gives you more space to examine the rock formations on the island. While the prison history is certainly fascinating, don't forget to look at the rocks beneath your feet, especially along the roads and pathways where the bedrock is exposed. The west side of the island offers some of the best views of the sandstone formations, where you can clearly see how thick and massive these beds are. It's easy to understand why this island was so difficult to escape from when you see these steep cliffs of hard sandstone dropping straight into the cold waters of the bay. There's one thing that we need to talk about during my visit to Alcatraz Island. This place is famous as a, like, terrible prison. And yet the park rangers are literally the nicest park rangers I have ever met. Every single one of them was so sweet. So massive round of applause to them. As we leave Alcatraz Island behind, I hope you'll never look at the rock the same way again. So next time someone mentions Alcatraz, you can tell them it's not just famous for its prison. It's a geologic time capsule that tells the story of how the entire San Francisco Bay Area came to be. I hope you enjoyed this geological journey with me to the famous rock. If you liked this episode, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and stay tuned for more upcoming geological adventures. And let me know in the comments which famous landmark should we explore the geological story written in stone of next. Until next time, keep rocking. Okay, that's the last one, I promise.